Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. It's Russell with Ink and Paper Blog. Hope you are doing very, very well today. As you guys know, I'm back for part two of my review of two of the shortlists for the National Book Award, which the winners are announced tomorrow, November 14th. This video is going to focus on the five novels that are selected for the shortlist for the National Book Awards inaugural Translated Fiction Prize. Now, this one's a little bit different. I have read three of the five on this list, but I do own all five. So I'm going to go through them for you. I'm going to start with the two that I haven't read, and I'm going to sort of speak to... Um, what I know about the prize, but I'm not going to be able to pick a winner because I haven't read two of them. Um, I really wanted to try, but I just didn't get to them quite yet, but they are definitely there on my list. So let's get started. I am super excited that the National Book Award has added the Translated Fiction Prize. I think Translated Fiction is phenomenal. As you guys know, I read a lot of it. And um, uh, yeah, so I'm super excited. So let's get started with the two books that I haven't read. The first one I haven't read is The Emissary by... Yoko Tawada. This was published by NDP, um, the New Direction paperback original, and this is translated from the Japanese by Margaret Mitsu Mitsutani, and I'm sorry, Margaret, I probably butchered your last name there. Now, what's really interesting about Yoko Tawada is that she, um, her last book, the one with, I can't remember the title with the polar bears, but I believe she currently lives in Germany, and that book was translated from the German into English, and then this one is translated from the Japanese into English. So all the more power, uh, Memoirs of a Polar Bear. There you go. Um, I, I am floored by people that speak two languages, three languages, four language. I can't even comprehend. Um, this story is sort of like set sort of like. It is. It's set in the future in Japan. Japan has had a disaster that has cut itself off from the rest of the world. And what has happened is the young, the babies, the newborns are frail and can barely move. And it's the elderly that are actually the energetic people of the community who are out there doing what they need to do. By the way, I just need to show you guys how this cover turns out. Is that not fantastic? Um, this is the story of a young boy and his great-great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, two greats, um, and um, their relationship. I love what it says on the back here. It says, the grandfather may be frail and great hair, but he is a beacon of hope, full of wit and free of self-pity. Definitely turning inside out of the dystopian scenario, Yoko Tawada creates an irresistibly funny, playful, joyous novel. Um... Yeah, so I started this one. This is the fourth one. I've started it. It is, it is really good. Um, I just haven't quite finished it yet. So if you like sort of one of those books that is on a dystopian type of setting, um, but looks at it with a sort of a uh, kink, uh, like a little smile, a little tink, twinkle in the eye, I think that that's The Emissary by Yoka Tawada. This is again published by New Direction Paperback Originals and translated from the Japanese by Margaret Mitsutani. So there you go. The second one I haven't read, I think the cover is just phenomenal. And that is Love by Hannah or Hannah Orstavik. This is translated from the Norwegian by Martin Atlan. And this is published by Archipelago Books. You guys just remember, and look at how this is just so unique. Now, this reminds me sort of in nature of Mrs. Dalloway because it takes some place in the, the um, sort of one day. Um, this is the story of a mother with a young child. The day before the child's ninth birthday, she doesn't realize until that day that his birthday is the next day. So she leaves him to go to the library, I believe, and he goes on a quest or an adventure. So it says... Wrapped up in her own dream world, she ventures to the local library, leaving him to wander the town, selling lottery tickets and visiting the homes of strangers. Sparse, glittering prose narrates the events of a single night, alternating seamlessly between the characters' experiences. So it sounds to me, that just all sounds very Mrs. Dalloway, Virginia Woolf to me. Um, I am super excited to get to this one. I just haven't yet, but it is the second book on the National Book Award short list for translated fiction and it sounds fantastic so again that's love by hannah ostervik ostervik translated from the norwegian by martin atkin out from archipelago books so there you go 
Okay, so for the three that I have read, um, two of them are out from Europa editions. You guys know how I feel about Europa. The first was actually my book club book pick for the month of October, and that's Disoriental by Nagar Davadi. This is translated by, from the French by Tina Cover. This is the story of a, a young woman who is from Iran, and at the age of 10, her family is forced to flee Iran, um, and they move to Paris or to France. Um, they are forced to leave because of the political upheaval in Iran and her parents' involvement in that. Her father is very vocal and writes um, against the new government that's coming into power, and that forces sort of the family to have to leave. He leaves first, and then his family follows. So we get a lot of history in this novel regarding Iran and what was going on at that time period. We also get a lot of family history. So if you like a book that is sort of a family saga where you really get to dive into all of those characters in a family, Disoriental is definitely for you. Um, also, we are dealing with our main character. She is a young woman who is at the start of the book in a, in a fertility clinic. She is trying to get pregnant. She is there by herself, though she did start the process with a young man. We learn a lot about her, her coming of age, um, also coming into her sexuality, how her family deals with that. Um, I will say this book is dense. This book is not one that you can read flying by. The prose is very immersive and beautiful and everything that you would want it to be. And it definitely is just a world in and of itself. It has a lot to say and it has a lot to teach. And I thought it was utterly utterly brilliant. So that is Disoriental by Nagar Devadi. This is out from Europa Editions, translated from the French by Tina Cover. Okay, the next book actually probably is maybe one of the more famous books on the list, and that's Trick by Dominique Domenico Starnon, translated from the Italian by Jumpa Lahiri, again out from um, Europa Editions. Now, <clears throat> I loved their last coat. <clears throat> Excuse me, let me take a drink of water. Um, I love their last book together, Ties. Trick is also very, very good. This is the story of an older gentleman who comes to his his daughter's house to watch his grandson while her daughter and her his her husband go on a math conference, I believe, together. If I remember correctly, I apologize. It's been a while since I've read this one. Um, while there, it turns out that his daughter and her family live in the old house that he actually brought and his daughter up in and where he lived with his wife. So there's a lot of reflection about his life. There's a lot of reflection about what, who we become. Also a lot of ref reflection about becoming older and leaving life and then coming back to sort of those memories. Um, it also has a lot to do with his interaction with his grandson. Um, you know, he's he's probably, I want to say, in his 70s, if I believe, if I remember correctly. His grandson is young, energetic. Also, there's some of those times where young people do things that we just don't understand. Um, this book is very, very good. Um, it is dynamic in that it has very little plot, but it has a lot to say in story. And it's a lot of retrospection. And it's, again, Jupa Lahiri in and of herself is a phenomenal writer, and she is working with a phenomenal text. And this is very, very good. Um, so that is Trick by Domenico Starnon, translated from the Italian by Jupa Lahiri, out from Europa Editions. Last but not least is probably the most famous book on the list currently this year, and that's Flights by Olga Tok Toka Zurk. The amount of times that I've had her on my channel, and my Polish is just awful, so I apologize. This is translated from the Polish by Jennifer Croft. This won the Man Booker International Prize this year, so that's why I say it's probably the most famous book on the list this year. Um, but this book is one of those, also one of those books that doesn't have a lot of plot, actually. It's a story, a meditation on travel. It's a meditation on um, the idea of relationships and movement. And yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. Um, it has a lot of different parts to it that sort of are all um, meditations on a theme. Um, it is beautifully translated, some amazing sections. It almost has sort of like these introspective philosophical conversations with you. And then we'll break it up with like a short story. Um, Jennifer Croft is 
brilliant. And Olga gives her so much amazing stuff to work with. Um, this book is not for you if you need sort of a A, B, C, D, F plot. Um, I skipped E there. I, I heard myself do it. Um, it is definitely something where you can dive in and out of. You can definitely take chunks of it. There will be parts of it that you will walk away with just blown away by just the statement in and of itself regarding relationships and time, travel, communication. Um, there's a lot to really love in this book, but this one to me is the one that is the most to, spill, to steal a, friend, a phrase from our British friends, Marmite, I think this will not be for everyone. I think that some people will struggle with the fact that there is no narrative structure. Um, but if you are going willing to give it a chance and really dive in and dive out, I think this is a book that has a lot to say. Um, with all its praise and accolades, I would have to think that this is the favorite for the award. Um, but if you are looking for a book that has more structure, it may not be the one that wins. I don't know. Um, there's so much good stuff on this list. So here's your short list. It's hard on this one because two of these are really thin. So let me put it up there. So this is your short list for the National Book Award International Fiction Translated Prize, um, which is their inaugural year. Which one do you guys will think will win? Which one of all of these um, is the one that you most want to read? I'd love to hear from you. Yay for translated fiction, really something that should be on everybody's TBR. So, as always, if you are a return subscriber to my channel, thank you so very much. If you are new to my channel, I appreciate it every time you come. And until next time, I wish you the best of reading, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!